Last year I've made two door lock projects. One was a keypad project and the second one was an RFID door lock project, each with a 3D printed case and a servo to open the door. Today I have a new one and probably the last door lock project on this channel. This is a fingerprint door lock with a black box integrated. So why is this better than the other two projects? Well, first you don't need to carry any key or card with you since you always have your fingerprint, so that's more convenient. It is also faster to use than typing the code on the keypad door lock. Just place the finger and open the door. Also, it is almost impossible to trick this door lock, since a fingerprint is difficult to copy, so with a metal case instead of plastic, this will be a very secure door lock. It also has a black box with an SD card and a real-time clock, so we could see the lock line by line with everything that happened with the door. So if something got stolen or damaged, we could see who opened the door, which day and at what hour. So that's what we will build today a fingerprint door lock with a black box security. So let's get started. What's up my friends, welcome back. Here on my table I have the entire setup, so I could show you how this works and why we need each component. But before that, this project is sponsored by GLC PCB. They are a professional PCB manufacturer from China with more than 10 years of experience. I can easily say that their services are the perfect solution for cheap and fast prototyping and for quantities from 5 up to 15,000 boards. For small boards you should try the panel by GLC PCB service and put more boards on the same 10 by 10 cm PCB and by that have even more boards for only $2. So back to our setup. First of all, I use the Arduino Mega because we need a lot of libraries for each module, and the memory of the Arduino Uno is not enough for that. Then I have the common 16x2 LCD screen to print the messages for the users. Now the main component is this fingerprint sensor, the R305. It has its own memory, and once you store the fingerprints for each user, you can use the WART port and communicate with the module, sending and receiving data from it. We can use up to 162 IDs with this module, and it has a lifetime of over 100 million scans. We also have three push buttons, close, add new, and scan or OK. One is to activate the scan process so the module won't be scanning all the time. Push the button and you will have around 5 or 6 seconds to place your finger. If not, the system will reset and you would have to push it again. But place your finger and once the fingerprint is scanned and it is on the user list, the door opens. To open and close the door, in my case I have a servo, but you could use any other mechanism. Maybe use a relay to open the door or a coil magnetic lock. Press the second button and close the door, and could only be opened by a user that is on the database of the sensor. The final button is for adding new users to the database. Press it once and it will ask you for the main user authentication. If there is no main user you get an error. If I place the main user finger, I get this message. Now press the add button till you reach the ID where you want to save the new fingerprint. Let's select ID5. Now press the scan button and it will ask you to place the new finger. I place the new finger and after the image was made, it will ask me to remove the finger and now put it back once again. If both images are ok, the new user is saved into ID5 and now I could open the door with that user as well. Ok guys, so now the extra part of this project are these two modules. One is a real-time clock, and the other one is an SD card module. I want this door to have a black box as well, and by that know who and when open the door and if someone try to enter the room. If you want to protect let's say your workshop, this will be a very good way to do that. So what I do is read the date and time from the real-time module, and then each time something new happens with the door, I write a new log to the SD card. 
Here I have a file example of what I did. First, user1 opened the door. Then there was an attempt, but there was no matched user. Then a new user was added as id3, and finally the door got locked by a user. There are more locks for errors, so read the final code to see all of them. And that's it, this is the entire system for the fingerprint door lock with a black box. I will later print a case for it using my 3D printer. The case should have places for the Arduino, buttons and the LCD. Ok, so this is the full schematic that I've used for this project. So have it in front of you and let's build it. First, let's get used to the fingerprint module. When you receive it, it has no fingerprint stored to its memory, so first we have to add our data. So connect it like this to an Arduino Uno, or like this to an Arduino Mega. So be careful that not all pins are good for this, since not all pins could create an interrupt for the RX pin. For this example, we will use the serial monitor to save our fingerprint to the sensor database. Upload example code below called fingerprint scan example. Make sure that you install the Adafruit fingerprint library that you could also find in the description of this video. On my webpage electronoops.com there is a step by step tutorial of this project, so also check that out. Upload this example code to the Arduino and open the serial monitor at the baud rate of 9600. Now send the ID number where you want to store the new fingerprint. I sent a 1, since I want to save my first print to the ID1 which will be the main user. So type 1 and press enter and follow the instructions. Scan the finger once, remove it and scan it once again and the new data is stored. Now my fingerprint is on the database. Now you have another small example code that will detect the scanned fingerprint. With the same schematic as before, upload the scanned fingerprint example code that you could find below. Open the serial monitor once again and place your finger on the sensor. So there you have it, ID1 was detected. With these two codes you now know how to store and read data from the sensor. Read the comments in the code for more. Ok, so now let's configure the real-time clock. This module has its own battery, so even when the Arduino is not power, it will still keep the real-time for more than an year. But first, we have to tell it the real-time. So connect it like this to the Arduino I2C port. Now open the set time example code from below and make sure you install the DS3231 library that you could also find below. Now here in the code, uncomment these three lines and add your exact date and time. Add the day, month and year and then place the hour, minute and seconds and then upload the code. Now comment back the lines and upload the code once again and now open serial monitor and there you have it. This is the real time you get from the sensor and all you have to do is to use the getTime and getDate functions of the DS3231 library. We already seen how the SD card module works in the 3D scanner tutorial. So check that video for more details. But you will need to install the SD library so you will find that below as well. Using the SD open and SD print functions we can write data to the SD card in a TXT format. And that's it, but now the final code is quite long, but I've placed comments for each line to help you understand it better. The main idea goes like this. The buttons will activate the loops for scanning, adding new users or close the door. After each loop there is an SD card log print and in each SD card print we first read the real time in order to print it in the TXT file. Below the void loop we have two functions. One is to scan the finger and the other one is to add new users to the database. Here you can change which ID is the main user, in my case is ID1 and only this ID will be able to add new users later. Also here is the maximum and minimum angle of the servo motor for open and close the door. Change these values in case you need other angles. And that's it, upload this code to the Arduino Mega and make sure you have this schematic for the final project. Also make sure you have already stored the fingerprint for the main user ID, 
otherwise you won't be able to add new IDs using this code. Before I show you the final process, I get the 3D printed case that I've designed and printed with PLA material. Printing settings for these parts are below. It is made out of two parts, the top of the case where all the components get fixed in place and the case itself that gets screws on the door with these pads here. Ok, so now that we have everything inside, let's test it. We start with the door locked. I press scan and then I place an unknown finger. So no match, so try again. I press scan once again and now I place the main finger. So I did detect it this time. Now press the close button and the door gets locked. Now press the add button and put the main user finger. Select the ID where you want to add the new user, in this case ID 14 for example. Scan the new ID finger and it gets stored. Now press scan once again and put the same finger and it will be detected as ID 14 and the door will open. Try adding a new user with the ID that is not the main user and you will get an error. Now remove the SD card and you can see this process on the black box file. If you want, download and print the case that I've designed for this project. You can place the Arduino Mega on the front plate and the LCD with entry screws and the rest of the components inside of the case and the servo getting out on this hole. You could supply this project with a USB or with a 12V DC input connected to the VIN pin of the Arduino. So the fingerprint door lock with black box is done. Check all the links below for my webpage electronoops.com for more details of the project with photos and text. Also all the examples for codes, schematics and libraries. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and that you have learned something new. So make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in order to see my future videos. And also click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. So thanks again and see you later guys.